to Brownsville, aka The Ville. To some, it's just another part of Brooklyn. To others, they would describe it as hell. Not too many good things can be said about Brownsville. But Brownsville did breed a few stars though. Did you know Larry King was from Brownsville? Mike Tyson was from Brownsville also. A few rappers too, such as Bootcam Click and M.O.P. This part of my documentary on Brownsville, which there will be three parts. In this documentary, I walk through Brownsville and speak with the residents and ask them about what they seen go down out here. I also ask them, will Brownsville ever change? Take a walk with me, Supreme, as I enter the most dangerous place in Brooklyn, Brownsville. My name is Prince, I'm from Bed-Stuy, originally we grew up in Bed-Stuy, moved to Brownsville. I lived in Bed-Stuy for 23 years of my life. Mm. Now that I live here in Brownsville, I've been in Brownsville for 23 years. Mm. Going on for a little more than 23 years now, because we're in 2013 right now. Mm. So basically I'm going to say a good 27, 28 years now here in Brownsville. Wow. And I went and did time, came home, did a lot of robberies, stick ups and all that. Wow. So I mean, it is what it is. Let man, us tell man us. Had, man had to get out here and do what he had to do to provide for his family. Mm -hmm. To have a roof over his head. Mm. It's hard. It's still a struggle. The struggle never stops. Mm. The struggle goes on each and every day. Mm. Out here in Brownsville, this is the reason why it's called Brownsville. It's not called Dodge City or do this and do that, do this and do that. It's Brownsville, just like they said, Brownsville. Mm. Like mini Afghanistan. That's mm. what it is. That's how you gotta look at Brownsville. It's the mini Afghanistan. The war, like they say, war on crime and all that. It's a real war out here. People are starving, people are struggling. People trying to make a dollar for the day. They can't get it. They really striving real hard. You know? Tell the streets about some one of the realest things you've seen happen out here in Brownsville, Prince. One of the realest things I've seen happen out here in Brownsville, man. I mean, me being an individual, a ruthless individual at that, a person that got respect for the law but disrespects the law at the same time because the laws don't stand for me. The law stands for the people who represent it. It don't stand for the people that's out here that's trying to make a living, that's trying to keep their kids in school or teach them something. They're giving us nothing. They're trying to shut down schools now. You understand? What, they're gonna, what are they going to put in place for these kids? Where are these kids going? They're trying to open the gates of hell again. They open the gates of hell again only to get jobs, create jobs for the people that's upstate, living upstate. Uh -huh. you know, the jails they close down up there, they're gonna open them back up. Once, once they do what they're doing, what function is that's going on out here? Brownville is the major target for a lot of criminals. Why I say that? Because this is where the police come and look for them at. Oh. All out here. Just running up on our, our youths. Youths ain't got nothing. They got nowhere to go. They're giving nothing to them. So how you expect these kids to act? What you expect these kids to do? When you're giving them nothing, they don't turn to nothing but violence. Mm. You understand? They turn to nothing what they know best, what they learn from their cousins, their uncles, nephews, and nieces. Mm -hmm. You understand? This is what makes them bad out there. This is why Brownsville is Brownsville. You understand? Mm, but what, what's Tell them again, what's one of the realest things you seen happen to somebody out here, man? With the realest thing I seen happen out here in Brownsville, all the police officers stopped the individual right here on the corner of Mother Gatsby and um, Belmont. I mean, they, they actually beat the individual furiously, bad. Wouldn't give him medical attention or nothing. You understand? Then took him to the precinct and tried to book him in the whole nine yards. And he still, still refused him medical attention. So, I mean, that there, right there, tells you a lot about what's going on here in Brownsville. And the next real thing I've seen is a shootout. Mm -hmm. Shootout right here. Kids moving about and everything. People ducking money. Broad daylight? Broad daylight. Broad daylight. You understand what I'm saying? Kids running, ducking and trying to get away from bullets and all that. I mean, what you expect? Mm -hmm. This is Brownsville. I've seen situations like that in Best Style when I used to live in Best Style. But it wasn't as crazy as it is over here in Brownsville. Let me ask you a question, man. You think Brownsville ever gonna change, man? No, it can't change. It can change, but when? I can't, I can't even speak on that. And I don't even know when it's gonna change. This is Brownsville's main shopping area. 
the infamous Pitkin Avenue. Pitkin Avenue was a spot for all the hustlers and pimps back in the days. It's changed a lot since then. Back in the 80s, you couldn't walk through Pitkin Avenue if you weren't a known hustler or killer. If you did, you were quickly spotted and robbed. Guys would walk from the projects and stick up the stores and walk right around the corner and go in the house. On check day, Pitkin Avenue was a playground for thieves and robbers. And this is the Crossroads Juvenile Detention Center. Yep, they built the jail right in the middle of the projects. And it's been here since 1998. I asked one of the officers could I interview her about the jail, but she declined and demanded that I move across the street. Her exact words were, you better not have my face on that fucking camera. But it's crazy how in the middle of all this poverty, they built a million dollar complex. I grew up in this building right here. I seen a lot from that second floor window. Murders, shootouts, robberies, people having sex late at night outside, <laughs> suicides. Yeah, I seen everything. But luckily I made it out. Brownsville is a weird and crazy place to live. During my documentary, I spoke with a few people about Brownsville and asked them, why is it like this? Will it ever change? The crazy part was, a lot of people thought I was the police or some kind of informant. Hardly no one wanted to speak on camera. Rocco and Livonia, another historic spot in Brownsville. Real famous for shootings, murders, and robberies. Coming off this train right here, at the wrong time of night or day, you'll be robbed. And this is Tilden Projects. I used to hang around here, so I can tell you personally, it's a terror dome. A lot of people I know still live here. I left here in 96. This is my first time back since then. But again, I didn't see anyone I knew. They were all gone. This is Langston Huge housing projects. When I was young, the guys from Van Dyke would have shootouts with these guys from here. Broad daylight. People running and shit. I also seen a lady jump out her window from like the 18th floor. Her head exploded when it hit the ground. I watched her jump from my grandmother's second floor window. Yeah, Langston Hughes is a dangerous place too. A lot of people I know got killed over here back in the days. Nowadays, it's ran by a new generation of younger hustlers that will kill with no remorse. Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is AKA Lightbulb. It is one of the realest tragedies that I've seen out here. I've been living out here for 40 years and I've seen a lady get shot. She was an innocent bystander, but you know what? God got her because what she was doing was trying to protect the children. How many years? Is, how many years did this ago, man? Yeah, it is. This happened about two years ago. Yeah. You been living in Brownsville how long, man? I've been living in Brownsville for four years. I lived here 44 years. 44 years, you know. But the thing about it, God will prevail. You know the reason why? Because she was a good lady, and I know she's in heaven right now. She was trying to protect the kids and she gave her own life. And the thing about it, she got nine kids of her own. Wow. That was a real tragedy that I have seen. I know her children, you know, and this is what happened in Brownville. So what I'm trying to say, you know what, they really do have to stop the gun violence. You know what I'm saying? Because that shouldn't have happened. You think Brownsville will ever change, man? Sure it will. It's not Brownsville, it's people that got to change. It's not the, it's not where you live at, it's the people. And that's what that's my piece right there. You are now looking at Belmont Avenue, which is a smaller version of what Pickin Avenue is. It has less stores, but it's more closer to the projects. Belmont Avenue was a robber's playground back in the day also. A lot of shit went down on Belmont Avenue, from drug sales to small heists where guys from the projects would mask up and walk in and hold up the store and rob everybody, even the customers. It was famous for having the hottest clothing spot in Brownsville, Simon's Sneaker Spot. All the hustlers shopped at Simon's. Harry's right across the street from Simon's is also a famous spot, where if you had money, that's where you got your clothes from. Brownsville Projects, a.k.a. Baghdad, or even worse. 60% of the crime that occur in Brownsville happens right here. Being that it's surrounded by Langston Hughes, Van Dyke, Tilden, and Marcus Garvey, man, Brownsville projects then went to war with them all. So you can imagine the number of lives lost. 
starting at ages 13 to this day it's the most dangerous project in the Ville. When I was young, me and my friends never went in there, and we were right across the street in Van Dyke, but we would never even walk on that side of the street. So you can imagine how real it was. It's good, it's your boy Harvey. Um, I've been over in Brown, I've been living here for about six years. Uh, I moved from the star, grew up, born and raised in the star. I've been over here for about six years, you know. Um, Everything you probably heard about Brownsville over there is true. I mean, it's a rough neighborhood. But for me, it's just like, it's, it's all my people, it's all my donkeys, it's all blacks and Latinos. You know what I mean? It's a rough neighborhood, but there's a lot of rough neighborhoods, you know, in Brooklyn. But this is one of the roughest ones, definitely. Yo, so tell the people, man, like, what's one of the realest things you've seen happen out here with, with your own eyes, man? Oh, yeah. Um, Probably about three years ago, I'm coming from work and shit, so I'm getting off at the at Rockaway right there, the three train. And, um, I'm, I'm, I'm coming down Rockaway. I hit motherfucking Dumont. There's two kids on bikes in the street, so I hit Dumont. And then all of a sudden, the car just pull up, and they're going to passenger side, just start licking, nigga let off about, about 40. You know what I mean? That ass, the nigga just hit the floor. I hit shots, hit the gate over my head, you know what I mean? Got back up, just kept it moving. It was just like it was normal, you know what I mean? They had a little patrol car up there for about two days. And, um, you know, everything was back to normal, you know what I mean? Like shit happened over here, drastic shit happens over here. And the next day, you would never know, you know what I mean? Because I just feel like people over here conditioned to certain things, you know what I mean? They conditioned to this environment, so nigga died, nigga laid out, you know what I mean? They wash the blood up and keep the move. You know Another I mean? regular day. Another regular day, exactly. Yo, exactly. so let me ask you this, son. Like, you, you think brands will ever change, man? Um, if, if, if it's gonna change, it's gonna have to. It's gonna have to change from the inside. You know what I mean? Um, a lot of a lot of minority people they just gotta change their mindset, and their mentality, and their way of thinking. But you know, on the other hand, you know what I mean? I feel like it's a social construct. I feel like. The way things are over here, the way they're meant to be, you know what I mean? You know, not to go into any conspiracies or anything, but I feel like for a large part, it's just like the government, you know, um, the powers that be, the people that are in control, quote unquote, you know, create circumstances like this, you know? And a lot of people just think it's the people, but just to give you one example, a lot of people don't know that the property taxes from a particular neighborhood is what funds the schools in that district. So when you go to more affluent, better neighborhoods and you see that there's better schools and the, the kids have a better environment to learn on, it's because there's a lot of homeowners in that environment. You look at some place like Brownsville, it's, it's majority projects or, or low income housing and there's not a lot of homeowners over here. So as a result, the educational system in a neighborhood like Brownsville suffers because they're not getting the funding that an affluent neighborhood would get. You know what I mean? So there's certain things from a from a social and structure standpoint that's gonna keep this neighborhood the way it is. It's gonna keep the people here poor, it's gonna keep the people here dependent and fighting, fighting amongst each other, you know. I mean it's a shame where, you know, I went into a store in this neighborhood and, you know, I inquired about a job. It wasn't for myself, it was for a friend of mine. And, and, and the uh, manager simply told me that they don't hire people from the neighborhood. So it's a shame when you have a, a place like Brownsville where there's hundreds of thousands of people that, you know, shop in this area and spend their money, but they can't even get a job over there, you know? And I, I think that's, it's just part of the social, social construct, you know what I mean? That's, the way it is is that, the, the way it's meant to be. And it's not the people that cause it, it's, it's the social construct. Yeah, what's happening, y'all? The God born reality, intelligence, God alone, the name of Allah. Some might know me as Louis Vuitton, born, but you know, outside of that, you know, I mean, like, hey, look, listen, <laughs> I get in where I fit in, baby. How long you been in Brownsville, man? Been in Brownsville all my life, baby. Brownsville half. Wow. Can you tell the people about some of the crazy things you've seen go down out here, Some man? of the crazy things I've seen go down out here, first of all, you know, like, I mean, like, this Arab by here part was not safe to walk up and down back in the days. I'm talking like the mid-70s to the, to the mid-80s. 
right there. The phones, middle of Marcus Garvey, he had four phones that was right there. That's out of this work. I ain't gonna tell you no lie. I don't care who stopped by right there. You might have got choked out, smoked out, choked out, all this. I'm dead serious, bro. Couldn't get off this train station here. You couldn't get off this train station here. Rockaway Avenue train station. I had jewels and did not know anybody. Good mind you. You got Tilton Projects, Riverdale, Grounder Projects, Marcus Garvey. You got Bandai going on the far side. I'm pretty sure y'all gonna catch, catch part of that. Mm -hmm. You got Langston Hughes, you know, um, New Park Gardens, which wasn't really added on until later on in the 80s. Am I right, Carl? You know, New Park Giggity, right? Yeah, but outside of all that, right? I mean, like, um, the things I seen outside here, man, was just, uh, I remember the bread truck. I, well, I was, I used to work on the soda truck, but he still used to get robbed anyway. The bread truck, the Wonder Bread Man, the Miller Man, the Budweiser Man, everybody had a separate truck. That's when they delivered beers to different houses. They used to keep their money right here. I used to see them get robbed so many times up and down here on delivery days. It's crazy. You might get choked out about 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. You wow. know what I mean? In between the hours of 6, 7 and 12 in the afternoon. It's a good chance for these to catch teachers and all that shit up and down there, Pop. <laughs> and, you know, it's funny because I took a couple of pulls, but I even got to this here goddamn second. <laughs> hey, look, one thing for certain, two things for sure. One new better, they do better, man. And, um, you know, like, I mean, like, hey, it was never ever safe out here. You know what I mean? I mean, not for the. Not for the inaverage individual, meaning that if you was outside of the box, man, something had to happen. He used to just test you. There wasn't no gunplay like that, like back in the days. I mean, you had the time I so on and so forth. But my, you know, these dudes fight with their hands, sticks, backs, and so on and so forth. There never really was no guns, baby. I mean, you know, unless it really, really called for it. You got me wasn't really into killing one another. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, that, that's what defined the man. You might just walk up and down this block back in the day, just, just shit smack that. Might be a dude with about four or five individuals that might be with him. What, what you do? You gonna turn around? You gonna fight that one? The other four that's with dude, they gonna back up and let you and dude have that dude one on one. You got me? I don't know what's going on with these kids nowadays. Hey, yo, boss, hold on a second. Yo, do you think brands will ever go change, man? Man, listen. I mean, from the way the brands are now, yes, of course. Because now, what I was just, what I just advocated prior to um, just now. Uh, where it wasn't safe to walk up and down there if you was uh, from other parts or whatever. Um, it's safe now. You know, so I mean, there's some change coming, but the way that the change is taking effect is kind of like, um, Speedy, whatever. The way that the change is taking effect is kind of like, uh, you know, it had some controversy to it, you know what I mean? It was a couple of bodies, and I mean, it was a whole lot of bodies. Both sides of the fence, police, and then us killing one another. You know, I mean, like, um, you know, it calmed down a little bit, maybe because of, maybe because of a lot of these little niggas going to jail. Not to say it like that, but still, you know. I mean, up off the streets, man. I mean, like, we ain't never shoot up and down Rockaway Avenue because, yeah, people, pedestrians, some of these, a lot of these pedestrians is people from the projects, not just people coming back and forth from Lincoln Avenue or Belmont or working at one of the little health centers over there or whatever, or one of the schools out here. You know, you had mothers, fathers, uh, grandmothers, aunts, you know, and all type of various uh, family members that was running up and down there. These kids nowadays really, don't, they really don't care, man. But you know, I mean, like nothing tragic, tragic, tragic has happened on this app per se, Rockaway Avenue. And yes, that I, you know, that I can know right now. Don't quote me on that, but then again, you can't. You know what I mean? I just get you fast. <laughs> And you know, I mean, I, hey, look, listen, man, far as things changing, a lot of these youths are waking up now, you know, they keep, uh, I see they keeping their beefs detained instead of coming at a brother from across the street, now they, they start to learn to walk up to them and just hand their little business, you understand, you know what I'm saying? Hey, no, look, man, listen, this is Black Ass Ball, and I'm signing out, baby, <laughs> around your original, and I went to 125 on Rockaway Black Ass, so you know how long I've been out here, since this shit was a sand hill right there, we used to do flips and all that on, you got me? Wow. I'm man, I'm a sign out, baby. All right. Do y'all need more questions for me? Buddy? Nah, we good, we good, we man. We good, baby? My man, man. All right. This is the court. I'm surprised it's still here. It's located right in the middle of the Tilden Projects, a place where local kids come play basketball. But here's the thing, you have to be from Tilden in order to play ball here safely. I personally then seen bloody fights, shootouts, things like that happen right here on this court. But hey, it's still the court. 
even though it's a danger zone. And this is a very, very famous spot in Brownsville, the Allah School in Medina. It's located right across from Tilden Projects, Van Dyke Projects, and is right next door to the Riverdale Houses. And honestly, this place has helped more kids and grown men than that Van Dyke Community Center will ever do. It's been here for decades. But before this, this was a nightclub called The Future, a notorious, deadly place where everyone from the Ville would come and party. And for a lot of people, it was their last party. The Future was surrounded by killers from Riverdale, Tilden, Van Dyke, Marcus Garvey, The Plaza, and Brownsville projects. So you can imagine the bloodshed. I can recall seeing people running for their lives coming out of the future. The future was ill because the bouncers were usually dudes from the projects. So if you knew them, you got inside with a gun or a knife. The future was basically a death trap with a DJ. While on Rockaway Avenue in Brownsville, I ran across this young man. Listen to what C-Class has to say about Brandsville. Hey yo, what up? It's your boy C-Class. Welcome to motherfucking Tilden Peas, one of the most infamous houses out here in Brownsville. If you don't know about Tilden Peas, you don't know about Brownsville. This shit is crazy out here. This shit real legit. You know what I'm from Tilden Peas myself. I'm C-Class, artist, you know what I'm saying, doing my thing. But um, my memories of Brownsville is I grew up in a different era. The era I grew up in, when niggas went to war, when niggas were army fatigued, they went to war. When niggas got baby strollers but no babies in it. Niggas got shotguns wrapped up and baby shit, you know what I'm saying? Niggas come outside with a baby bag on, with two, three clips and hams in there. Mm. When niggas banging out in broad day, when there was no police out here like that. Niggas wow. shoot a nigga in the head, run on the piece, reload, come back out, do it again. See wow. what I'm saying? I'm from that era, you know what I'm saying? Where you couldn't talk about it even live it, you know what I'm saying? Like, when niggas couldn't go with certain hoods unless you bring your hammer to get in and get out. You couldn't walk the picking if you wasn't certified. Exactly. That's the brands where I'm from, you know what I mean? Not this, this other shit where everybody running around kissing the cheeks and, and hugging and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? With, with Schumann. If you know Schumann, you know he come out, nigga. He come to get you. He giving you 100 years, nigga. I'm from that side of there. I'm from Tilda Pizzo. That's what's up. Hey, yo, so like, tell the people, like, you think brands will ever go change, man? Nah, I don't think brands will never change. The reason why I've never changed because there's no love here, you know what I'm saying? When there's no love, it's going to be a perpetual cycle. You shoot him, I'm going to shoot him, and it's going to keep going, 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 going for generation and generation, you know what I mean? Until it's love, it's going to be number thugs. As it's been, but you know, I'm here doing my thing, make sure certain niggas I can fuck with get out of here, take them 100 mils and keep going. But it's brands are forever. Nigga, you see that shit on my arm, nigga? Till the peace. Riverdale, located directly across the street from the Tilden houses. Riverdale is a small housing project built in a circle form. All the buildings connect. It's changed a lot since back in the days, or has it? Back in the days, Riverdale was notorious. There was a small group of dudes who ran the small area back then. There were also a lot of house parties that went on in Riverdale that ended up turning into bloodbaths killings, robberies, rapes. Riverdale would have day-to-day -day shootouts with the guys from Tilden, who, like I said, were directly across the street. This is the famous Pazano's Pizza Shop. A lot of cats got caught slipping in here. If you was from Tilden and had beef with Riverdale, or was from Riverdale and had beef with Tilden, then it was handled right here, in front of customers and all. Yeah, that was Pazano's. This is Jin Fu's liquor store, another landmark on Rockaway Avenue. It's been here for over 30 years or longer, owned by a Chinese couple, happily serving the community with the perfect potion to inspire you to go outside and shoot some shit up. It's also another hot spot where dudes would come to get their drink on or end up under a sheet or on a stretcher. This is the Van Dyke Community Center. It's been here for quite a while now. But my question is this, they put millions of dollars into building this community center, but the people here are still poor and broke. The violence here still continues. And is it really helping the kids here in the community? If you currently live in Van Dyke, when I was young, this is what used to be called the Wooden Park. 
a large play area riddled with broken glass, used condoms, and crack bottles. The play area was made of a dark colored wood. At night, the wooden park was where you smoked your weed at. A lot of crazy stuff went on in the wooden park. I look at these children playing and I think, will they make it out of Brandsville? Or they become victims of the drugs and violence that plagues Brandsville streets till this very day. While walking, I noticed this man being stopped and questioned by police. I didn't start filming until I saw they asked him to stand against the car. I didn't want to make it obvious that I was filming, but as you can see, the young man notices me filming the stop and frisk. But as you can clearly see how serious the police are, everywhere I went they were there, on the corners and walking the blocks. The best place to be in Brownsville, if you live in Brownsville, is in the house. While walking through the Brownsville projects, I ran across this. At first I thought, construction use? But no. The Nightlight Pro is used by law enforcement to brighten up the area where the most violence is taking place. And I think again, and I say, I wonder how much it costs to have this mobile flashlight sitting here. In the midst of all this poverty, this is what the money is spent on. In the Brownsville projects, this patrol car with two officers inside are just sitting right in the middle of the projects, a few feet from where some kids are playing. This is just to show you how vicious Brownsville is. At any given time of the day, bullets may start flying. These young cats will shoot even if kids are in the way of their targets. Something bad must have recently happened here for the police just to be sitting here like this. We're now standing in the heart of the Brownsville projects. And as you can see, right now, it's kind of quiet out. You don't really see much going on. But don't be fooled. It can change in seconds. Hello. I am Supreme Films. First and foremost, I'd again like to thank all the viewers for watching parts 1 and 2. This is part 3 of Never Ever Will, the Brownsville documentary. Today I will be taking you through the Howard Housing Projects, the Marcus Garvey Houses, and the Riverdale Houses. If you watched 1 and 2, the residents here really believe that I'm some type of undercover cop or informant. Brownsville has been titled the Belly of the Beast. The residents looked at me like, what does he have a camera for? And why is he videotaping? Brownsville is crazy like that. It's so bad and grimy here that when the residents see things like people filming, they don't even know how to act. That's why it's so difficult to get people to speak on camera. They think I'm against them. You are now entering the Howard Housing Projects in Brownsville. Howard Projects is made up of 10 buildings seven and thirteen stories high. Nowadays, it's been said to be the worst of the worst part of Brownsville. Even back when I was a teenager living in Brownsville, Howard Projects was stained with crime. Some real vicious people used to live there, and some still live there till this day. I wasn't even attempting to ask anyone to speak on camera. The word spread pretty quick that there was a dude walking around filming the projects. And the looks I started to get let me know that it was time to leave Howard Projects. But on my way out, I ran across what looked to me like what used to be called Yogi Bear. When I was a teenager, Yogi Bear was ran by a church. And on Sundays, a yellow big bus would ride around the neighborhood and pick up any kid that wanted to go. They would take you to church, then let you eat snacks and play games. That was years ago. But I can bet this little mobile PlayStation for the kids is a newer version of Yogi Bear where they teach kids about God but they add fun and games to it to make it more appealing to the neighborhood kids. And look at the color of the truck. It's yellow. Same color as the Yogi Bear bus. Guess I was right. While documenting Howard projects, I ran across three housing workers. 
I introduced myself and informed them of who I was and what I was doing. They quickly declined. It's a little after 3 p.m. and it may look peaceful, but don't be fooled. People of all ages have been murdered here due to violence. And right around the corner from Howard Projects lies the 65th Precinct, demolished. Back in the days, this used to be open. I remember seeing police cars lined up out here. That's when I was a kid. It was built in the 1900s, and it closed its doors in the mid-80s. But think about it. When was the last time you saw or has ever seen a closed-down precinct where crime has been at an all-time high since the 1970s? Hmm. You are now looking at one of many pawn shops on Pitkin Avenue. This is just two of them on the same block, just doors away from each other. When I was growing up here, there were more than 20 pawn shops on Pitkin Avenue alone. That's how many chain snatchings and robberies would happen out here. Today, there are not that many, probably 10 or less, but that's still a lot for one neighborhood. I am now on Rockaway Avenue, and this is a small area for residents to shop. But out here, these are the same stores you're going to see throughout the entire neighborhood of Brownsville. Chinese restaurants, laundromats, fried chicken restaurants owned by Arabs, and Arab-owned grocery stores. Nothing in Brownsville is black-owned. You are now on Rockaway and Sutter. And these houses that you see here, I've been told by many that these apartments are for sex offenders and child rapists. Each apartment's number is highlighted in red at nighttime. I'm not sure why they're housed here, but they are. I'm just going off what I've been told. If you know more about these apartments here in Brandsville, drop a comment below. While walking Rockaway Avenue, I spotted these two officers doing something to one of those nightlight pros. The mobile lights used to brighten up a high crime area. And again, I wonder how much it costs the city every day to have these lights sitting all over Brandsville houses. Here on Rockaway and Blake Avenue, you're looking at this old library. Since I was a young, young kid, this place has been vacant for over 30 some odd years. But finally, I can see that some company has put up a sign, I guess to maybe renovate it or turn it into something. But if you live in Brownsville, you know for yourself that this place hasn't been open for years. If you know what this place used to be, please drop a comment below and let us know. You are now entering the Marcus Garvey housing projects. Marcus Garvey is a three-story housing project. Back in the days, Marcus Garvey was notorious. It was once ran by the infamous Low Lives shoplifting crew that stole polo clothing from department stores to a degree where Ralph Lauren himself knew about the gang. Since then, it's now home to the Crip Street Gang and a lot of young people lose their lives here in Marcus Garvey every day. The crime rate is super high here. Looking at these buildings kind of reminds me of the infamous Calio houses in New Orleans. They got so bad with crime that the city closed down the projects. The Calio projects once home to the rapper and mogul Master P. But just like the Calio apartments here in Marcus Garvey, just looks like trouble. Funny thing is, right here in the heart of war, there's a security guard posted up. They've put up a lot of new apartment buildings here along Rockaway Avenue. I can remember back when that was an empty lot where those apartments are on your right. They look to be some type of special program housing. Back in the days, like I said, it was an empty lot. You could walk from Rockaway Avenue across the lot right into Marcus Garvey Projects. And this liquor store here on Riverdale and Rockaway, wow, has been here for decades. As far back as I can remember, it's been here. And hey, it's still in business after who knows, maybe 35, 40 years this place has been here. And here is another new apartment complex here in Brandsville on Riverdale and Rockaway. As if there isn't enough apartment complexes in Brandsville already. Riverdale and Thatford in Brandsville, home of my old public school PS41 and also home of the infamous Riverdale houses. If you watched part two of Never Ever Will, I went to the front gate of Riverdale, but we didn't go inside. But today, I'm going to take you inside the Riverdale houses. 
to show you how it looks. A lot of dudes are still in jail from crimes they committed in the early 1990s that lived in Riverdale. But as you can see, things have changed. They've built a new jungle gym here for the young kids to play. And there's lots of old people out just sitting out just enjoying the day. But like I explained in part two of Never Ever Will, Riverdale was notorious for shootouts, raping, stabbings, etc, etc. They had lots and lots of shootouts with the guys from Tilden, which like I said in part two of Never Ever Will, was right across the street. Take a look around Riverdale houses today. While leaving Riverdale houses, I decided to go by PS41, my old public school. All the children from Brandsville attend PS41. PS41 is a legend in Brandsville. A lot of people went to this school. You are now looking at Brownsville's Newport Gardens. Newport Gardens was built in the early 1980s. But Newport Houses wasn't always bad in the beginning. Over the years, it's gained a name. And like Marcus Garvey Houses, it's now ran by the Crips Street Gang, which now makes Newport Gardens look like all the other crime-filled housing projects in Brownsville, riddled with numerous arrests, shootings, and robberies. But like the rest, it's a place to live. So the residents do their best to make the best out of it and try and keep their children safe from the poverty stricken streets. This has been part three of Never Ever Will, the Brownsville documentary. Once again, I am Supreme and I hope you learned something new and interesting from watching this documentary. And this will conclude my documentary on Brownsville. Thanks to all that participated and thanks again for watching. If you would like to stay in tune for more projects from me, Follow my Instagram and Twitter. This has been Never Ever Will, the Brandsville documentary. I am Supreme Films, and peace.